We've had our Bentley Turbo R project for some time now, but the one thing we hadn't done is to bring it back home to the factory and crew where it was made. So I'm here with the editor of Rolls-Royce and Bentley driver, Paul Guinness, to take a fantastic tour of the facility to see how things have changed in the three decades. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are giving you the chance to win this Sealy 12 volt cordless power tool kit, including hammer drill, ratchet wrench, impact driver, and more. Click the link in the description to enter, and good luck. There are two lines in here. There's the Bentayga line. This is the Continental Flying Spur line here. It's basically a big U shape with a little dog leg. So the cars go down here, around the corner and back again. And they fit, come off the line very close to where they start. In the middle, you've got the little supplier cells that are building interior pieces to feed the line. And then the Bentayga line is basically an L shape. So the cars start here, travel along the uh, south end of the build hall and then turn down here and just get gradually put together. And again, same supply of cells, feeding the line both sides. And we'll see all of that as we go. Bentayga line, around 30 cars a day. So this runs on a 13.3 minute tack time. So the cars are at each station for just over 13 minutes. The colleagues that build the cars are trained in multiple stations. So we'll rotate them around different places over the course of a few days um, so they have a wider skill set. I was a graduate here. You get to spend a month building cars, which is absolutely amazing. I ended up doing every single station down the Continental Line. As a former engineer, the, uh, the engine marriage station, which is where the running chassis meets the body, is the, is the best one, and we'll see that shortly. So you'll note that none of these cars here have doors. And that's because when the, when the car arrives at the start of the line from the paint shop, the first thing we do is take the doors off and then the doors go off to a trim cell and get trimmed. So it's all timed so that the right doors meet the right car at the right place. So I was talking about engine marriage. This is, this is the engine marriage station for, for that take. But the engines come in from the engine line, complete with their front suspension. So these guys will crane an engine over with its gearbox on. They then build up the drivetrain, so the prop shaft, the rear axle, the exhaust system. Takes it back to the production line and then they just merge together. But of course, the line is always moving. So when they do that merge, both bits are still also moving forwards at the same speed as well. And then the guys go in with computer controlled DC tooling and the car can't, we can't leave the station until the tooling reports that all the bolts have been gone up to the right torque yeah. in the right order. So this, as you can probably tell, is the wood shop. First thing to show you is this room. So this is, these are the raw leaves of veneer. So this is what we bring into the business. So we have specialists that will travel the world looking for the right veneer and we pull veneer from all sorts of places around the world and each one of these packs you see is a car you'll see there's deliberately a hawaii over here for the koa because it grows on the side of a volcano but it's absolutely gorgeous you can see the the difference in the color on there and the beauty of the bending in it it's absolutely stunning one of the things we've introduced in the last few months is uh, open pour and the difference between open pour and regular is how much lacquer we use on it. Rather than having that very high gloss, you actually can feel the natural texture of the wood. This is the substrate, so this is a formed piece of aluminium that the wood is then mounted on. These are all the different layers that you can see. So we put the, uh, the laminate pack on, we put the veneer on, we press it at 200 bar of pressure, 145 degrees for five minutes. And then we sand that surface, then we lacquer it. And what you get, if you feel this, so that's, that's raw lacquer and you'll feel it's got texture to it, mm -hmm. got the orange oh, yeah, peel yeah, yeah. effect. Yeah. And then what we do is you go through multiple layers of sanding, so you reduce that lacquer layer to 0.2 of a mil, and then you polish it. So the first step in the process is, is the book matching. So you know that the veneer in a car is mirrored across the car front to rear as well and left to right. That's what the colleague here is doing. So he's taking those packs of veneer, cutting them and then sticking them together, purely by eye and by hand, 
so that the grain matches up so you get that mirror effect. This is another open pore wood, but this is a really fascinating story. This wood is 5,000 years old. So this is wood that was recovered from a, a peat river. And what they typically do is either burn it or throw it away. We've started reclaiming it and we've developed a process where we can then make veneer out of it. And it has this incredible texture and quality. Yeah, so, deep. so one of the handful of robots in the factory is our, the lacquer spraying arm. Each of the wood sets has five coats of lacquer. Waterfall behind just to catch all the overspray and then it can be separated oh, out and okay. recycled. And we use a robot for this just because of the repeatability. For the guys that are doing the sanding to be able to sand to point to of a mill without burning through the lacquer, the lacquer has to be the same thickness everywhere. So this is the sanding area. So flatting and then polishing. They put the piece of wood into a, a mould to hold it steady and then the sanding belt just runs over the top of the wood and they have a pad to press it into the piece. They will move their hand left and right depending on where they want to be and it's a completely combined motion by eye and by hand. If they make a mistake, they don't just destroy that one piece, it ruins the entire set because it's all going to match. Truly incredible. This is one of those bits where you just think, how on earth is that doable without making a single mistake? When we talk about hand craftsmanship and hand building cars, you can really see that this is what happens here. It's not done by machine, it's done by skilled people. This whole space is the trim shop. Regardless of where the panels actually receive their leather, this is where every piece of leather is cut and sewn. And this is also where we make all the seats. Um, so an embroidery stations where we can do Bentley wings or bespoke embroidery. So names or logos, family crests, royal crests, all of those sort of things. A lot of the leather is, is Northern European, principally because of climate, because you want leather from cows from cooler countries because there are less biting insects. So you get, you get cleaner leather. Every piece of leather you see in here is a byproduct of the meat industry. It's essentially a waste product. And these guys then inspect the leather and they're looking for any defects that then can't be visible in the car. An insect bite, maybe the cow in its life has scratched itself. They'll mark out with different coloured crayons where those areas are that can't be used. You'll see there's a camera in the ceiling. So the camera then interprets all of these marks and goes, okay, now I know which of the usable hide space there is. Work out with an algorithm all the different shapes it's got to cut out it maps them into the usable space to get the maximum utilisation wow. out of that hide. Once it's signed off, it comes in with basically a little pizza wheel and cuts out all the shapes. And you can see then what comes out of that process is just lots of bits of shaped leather. And then the real work for that. Obvious what we have here, this is the sewing area. They're taking the various specifications of foam that have to sit behind that leather, depending on where in the car it goes, and then stitching it together flawlessly and quickly. They won't produce absolute beautiful quality unless they enjoy what they're doing. This is not a job you do begrudgingly, it's a job you do because you love what you're doing. This is an embroidered diamond and then a running stitch through it. This diamond has 712 individual stitches in it. And if you look, every single one of them points to the center of the diamond because there are some things yeah. where you just need the human to do it. You need yeah. the eye and the fingers. Yeah. You know, she's not using any tools, she's just using her sensors. The, our highest spec seat has 22 ways of motion. It's heated, it's cool, and it's got the massage system. When you actually look at what the seat can do, it's an incredible machine in itself. We're at the start of the Continental and Flying Spur line. The one thing we don't do here now, now that Mulsan has finished, is we don't make bodies here anymore. And the first thing we do with a body like that is the wiring harness. Eight kilometers of wiring on a GT. Yellow and black table comes across this way. Engine, lower front suspension, wow. uprights, brakes, gearbox, exhaust system, prop shaft, and entire rear axle assembly. And of course, this table is equipped, so as it comes up, as I said before, the line doesn't stop, so the whole thing moves forwards at the same time. There's a policy here, you know, if they spot damage, they can flag it up, even if it's something that's not to do with them. Yeah. We have a rework area at the end. So if you start trying to fix stuff on the line, you hold up the line. Right. So if you accidentally damage the car, you raise your hand and say, I've done this. You go, okay, no problem, we'll fix it when it gets to the end. And then you've got stuff like this, which is the monitoring for the whole line. You can't build a perfect car in an imperfect factory. So we have a number of things that we do to the cars once they come off the assembly line. Shake rig, so this is putting vibration through the car. It's making sure everything is seated properly, but it's also the first indication of anything that's loose in the car. It goes into one of the two rolling roads over there, that's for things like brake bedding, and then it will go out on road test. Any issues are fixed, and then it's into final inspection. So there we go. That is a whistle-stop tour of how we build cars. With Bentley being over 100 years old now, it would be easy to assume this historic brand may struggle with adapting for the 21st century. But by investing in the very latest manufacturing techniques and heavily modernising its production facilities, 
Bentley has created the infrastructure to ensure it can continue to build the very best luxury cars well into the future.